Welcome to my review of Batman for the NES. And I would say this is the best movie licensed game on the NES by far. Which, you know, I, I really judge a game by its gameplay and, and, you know, just being a game itself. Not really, you know, the fact that it's based on anything. I really could give a shit less. But um, it's still to me very cool that they were able to pull this off. And, and you know, and it, and it, it has a pretty good um, connection to the, to the you know, actual movie, which is kind of cool. You know, most NES games did not pull that off well at all. Because LGN, um, a very shitty company, hand, handled a lot of those games. And Ocean, another real piece of shit company, um, they did a lot of the movie license games. And they were, you know, a lot of them were complete shit. Some of the worst games on the NES. But this is one of the one of the best side-scrolling action games on the NES, I would say. I'd say, I'd say it's among the best. Well, I do give the Ninja Gaiden games the edge. Um... This is still one of my favorite side-scrolling action games on the NES. So I have a lot of praise for this game, definitely. Um, another one I have to review that I that I completed but don't have any footage. The reason I didn't review it is because I don't have any gameplay footage because I beat it years ago before I had recording capabilities in 2017. Is Gremlins 2 for the NES. Another awesome um, licensed NES game. Um, probably second to this as far as if I had a rate movie licensed games on the NES. Not that there's a lot of good ones, but Gremlins 2 would be the second. I, I think I think this is better than Gremlins 2 by a little bit, but, I mean, Gremlins 2 is up there, man. I think Gremlins 2 is... Um, it's one of the better games on the NES. I, I like it a lot. I thought it was a great game by Sunsoft. This is by Sunsoft as well. And, of course, they ha Sunsoft has some of the best soundtracks in their games. Um, you know, they, they did release... The Turd Fester's Quest, which is a pretty fucking bad game, but they have a pretty good track record overall with their releases. So here in this boss fight, you saw me switching between my, my four different weapons. I believe it's four different weapons. You have your Batarang, um, your gun, you have a triple shot, and you have your regular punches. So you have four different means of attack. So... The reason I showed that boss is because it's a good demonstration of seeing all the different weapon types that you have at your disposal. I believe you hit select to swap between your different weapon types, and you pick up ammo as a power-up pickup from enemy drops. So that's how you get your ammo for various weapons. And, you know, you got your boss fights similar to, like, Ninja Gaiden on the NES. Very similar to those games. And the boss fights are really good. And the game, challenge-wise, uh, for a platforming veteran of these type of games, I would say it's really not too difficult at all until you get to the final stretch, which is this final tower that I'm on right here. You have to do this climbing, which is a little tricky, but the hard part is not this. It's the, um, when you get to the top, you have to fight two bosses in a row. Now, you do um, you do get a checkpoint if you beat the, the semi-final boss. But the final boss is Joker, and Joker can be very hard even by himself to beat. The game is generous in that if you have multiple lives when you get to him, you'll, you'll get to start on Joker until you exhaust your lives if you beat the semi-final boss. But even so, the Joker can be very hard to take down. But I will also post a link to my tutorial of the game with commentary, and I'll explain my, my strategies. I actually um, I show a video of me beating the Joker with only getting hit once. And... Um, I, I explain the strategy for, for trying to minimize damage, you know, so I think it's a good a good strategy, and I think the video will be very helpful for a lot of players. So yeah, once you get to the end, you have your semi-final boss here, and um, the semi-final guy, you can fight pretty sloppily by throwing out these battle rings. I didn't even learn his patterns, and I was able to roast his ass. So, you know, not much that you need to do. I mean, you can play this much better and dodge everything. You know, but that's just that's not what I did, obviously. I did it really fucking sloppy. But um, when, I, when, I, when I did the, the Joker, um, at least for my tutorial, I did a, um, a only hit once run, basically. Which is where you kind of move your head with the tip of his gun, as you see me doing. So that's in the tutorial. But now I've only done this once. I'm, I'm not actually that good at the Joker. This was with isolated safe state practice where I started the Joker fight again and again for maybe 30 minutes or so until I got a good run. But um, 
Yeah, awesome game. I mean, you got your side scrolling action. You have unlimited continues. But you do have to start at the beginning of the stage if you exhaust your lives. But if you do lose a life, you'll start at the last section you got to. Similar to Ninja Gaiden for NES, those games. Very similar in a lot of ways to Ninja Gaiden for the NES. You got your boss health bars, of course. And boss fights at the end of each stage. The game is not that long. It's kind of short, but it's it's a decent length. You know, it's not as long as some of these NES action games. Maybe it's about 30 minutes, if I remember right. Or maybe 20 or something, 25 it's not super long, but it's a good length, and it's a great game. Extremely enjoyable. And I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.